So then the question is, when we call this start server stream function, then what do we call this function on? So uh, to review this, let's take a look at this server streaming application on the server side. And under applications, we're going to have a folder called uh, server streaming right there. So now in this case, uh, there is going to be streams a folder with our Star Wars.fov, which is the file that we requested the server to play. And uh, more importantly, there is also another file called app.config. And this is something that I have not mentioned yet. In app.config, let's take a look at that file. This is, uh, this is just configuration file for your messaging application. In this, in this case, messaging application and server streaming. Uh, one of the most important things is going to be this line right here, application handler. So optionally, every single messaging application that you, that you have could, could be associated with a, with a .NET class. And that, and that class is going to be like the core class for your messaging application. So any events that occur around that, uh, around that messaging app are going to be invoked on this specific class, in this case, app handler meaning that if the client connects or the client disconnects, client starts streaming or stops streaming, they, uh, all of those callbacks are going to be in this app handler. And on top of this, when the client invokes a server-side function, in this case, start server stream, then this function must be declared in that application handler as well. So let's take a look at the server streaming .app handler and see what that uh, class looks like. So I'm going to go into examples. Here it is, server streaming app handler. Fairly trivial class. Uh, in, order, in order for a class to become application handler, first of all, just, it must extend this web orb messaging server that adapter that application handler. And that's what makes it an application handler. And this is the, this is the method that the Flex client invokes. Start server stream, passes the stream. And, and inside of this, we do have this ha uh, dictionary of stream name to the actual server stream. But let's ignore this for a second. Uh, and uh, let's just say that this function, all it does, it creates a stream uh, using this create stream. And inside of this, we have this server stream class that we declare inside of WebWorp. We add a play item, which is going to be the uh, Star Wars.fov. And we say stream.start. Okay, so that starts the broadcast, starts the playback of that particular stream. And any other client that connects to that stream will be able to watch that stream at exactly the same point as anybody else. So let's see how that works. So once you compile this class, it needs to be deployed in the bin folder and then referenced in app.config. Uh, let me go ahead and run this application and uh, see what it looks like. All right, so here it is. Here's, this is our client. Uh, we got the success, meaning that the connection went through. I'm going to start broadcast. And uh, it, it just invokes this function, starts the broadcast. And once I connect the stream, it will start playing that stream right here. So what I'm going to do next is take this URL and open it up in, uh, in another browser while this stream is playing. And now, since we know that broadcast has started and it's streaming, then in the second browser, I'm just going to con uh, 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 click Connect to the Stream. So here it is. I have two different clients, and they're watching exactly the same thing. Okay. And then if I were to add additional, additional browsers, then they all would be synchronized in that time. There's a little bit of delay because my computer is a little bit struck now uh, with you know, flash builder and uh, go to meeting and everything else, but but other, other, otherwise it's it's all would be synchronized. So that's that's the server side streaming. And let me check if there are any questions related to server side streaming. Okay, now we're doing good. So let me close this guy. Now another another cool thing is in your server side streaming, you can you can add more than one play item to your stream. So let's say if you were to create uh, a video 
gallery, or uh, it could actually be an audio play item. So you could you could add MP3s here. So this way you can easily create a radio station that just you know cycles through all the all the files and broadcasts that that audio to anyone who connects to that particular stream. Okay, so there is a question whether it's possible to stream video from an, uh, from a camera to the server. Yes, it is possible. In fact, uh, let's talk about that next. All right, so if, if you guys can think of any questions regarding server-side streaming, we'll return to this. And uh, the next thing that I would like to show you is, uh, uh, is a video recorder. So here's my video recorder uh, app. Let's take a look at the design of this. And it's going to be a very, very basic. I didn't spend really any time on the actual design part of my examples. But what we're going to have here is uh, just a, a video display component, uh, which will display everything that is coming uh, through the computer's camera. We will be able to enter the name of the stream, and then click Record, and it's going to start recording that particular video that is coming from the webcam on, uh, in, on the server side, right? and thus creating an FLV file. This is, uh, this is going to be our log. And let's take a look at the source code of this as well. So uh, the first part, when the application starts, once again, it calls the init method. Inside of the init method, uh, we create net connection. And, and, and now we're going to be connecting to stream recording application. And stream recording is yet another folder under the applications. So here we have this stream recording. Okay, uh, We get the camera on the computer, and then we attach this camera to our video display uh, component. And here's our video display. So when when user clicks, record, uh, clicks this button that says record, we invoke record stream function. And this is what we do. So we create a stream object associated with net connection. We attach camera to the stream and then call stream.publish. And we will pass the, any text that is entered in the text field to, as the first argument. And the second argument is special value it's as a record, which instructs WebWorp to start recording uh, that particular stream on the, on the server. So let me run this app. All right, it's going to ask me whether I want to grant access to the microphone and camera. Yes, here, that's me talking to you guys on the phone, uh, conducting a live webinar. And uh, let me type in a name for the stream, my demo stream, and click record. So now it started recording. And while it is doing this, let's go to the server side stream recording. And here it is, uh, streams. And this my demo stream.flv is located right here. So it is actually recording as I speak to you. And when I click stop, it's just going to finalize everything. So here we have this FLV file. And to verify whether it uh, recorded everything or not, I'm just going to close this window and go back to our video player application. And let's modify this video player so we can play back what we just recorded. And uh, the name of the app is going to be Stream Recording. Stream Recording. And the name of the file is mydemostream.flv. All right, so let me save that and just run the application. So here it is. Here's the recording. Of course, I didn't adjust uh, all, any of the settings uh, on, on the quality of that recording. But... Uh, and you can you can modify it by adjusting the quality or the, the bandwidth, and that will make the, the quality a little bit higher. But anyway, here's that FLV that we just 
recorded with the other example. All right, let me check if there are any questions here. All right, there is a question whether this can be used in Web Warp for Rails. No, this, this functionality will be present only in Web Warp for .NET and Web Warp for Java. Okay, uh, Peter is asking if it is only one stream out of server with more viewers. Peter, if you could uh, uh, submit a, f a clarification on what you mean by by your question, because I, I don't quite understand what uh, what you're asking. All right. Uh, so another question from Tom, and uh, Tom says that he was referring to a webcam, but not, I guess, not to a webcam, but to an IP camera. I'd like to stream directly to the web web server instead of using PC to convert the data. Uh, I'm not that familiar with IP cameras. Uh, in this case, I do have a Flex app that runs in the browser. It could be an Air app. So as long as you have a client that can recognize the camera object, and that client starts streaming the data using RTMP. So if your camera can start can stream RTMP data to the server, then WebWorp will understand it. Otherwise, there would need to be some sort of transcoder that takes the data stream, stream uh, the data from the camera and converts it into the stream that would be understood by the server side. Okay. So the, these are all, I guess there are some more questions. Okay. Uh, all right. So the, there is a question whether I assume Jason, you're asking whether it can record MP4 instead of FOV. So at this time, it can play back both FOV and MP4, a, uh, but it cannot record MP4. So MP4 is only on the playback, but on recording, it is going to be an FOV. Uh, Damon is asking with, uh, how I connect it to the destination and configure web warp messaging config. So at this point, uh, I have not done anything with messaging destinations. It is, it is pure RTMP functionality, uh, and the destinations would come in when I, if I were to start working with producer consumer APIs. That's when the destinations come in. But for now, it is just pure RTMP functionality. Uh, there is a question from William. Uh, what video formats uh, can we stream back to the client? Uh, and so the formats are MP4 and FOV, and uh, those those are the formats that that uh, that Web Warp understands and has the uh, has their uh, support for. All right. Uh, there is a question on how many parallel users Web Warp can hold safely. Any special requirements for RAM? This is this is going to be really a function of uh, several parameters. One is the actual hardware that Web Warp runs on. Second is what each individual user does. Whether you're whether you're doing just plain data messaging or if you're doing video streaming, uh, whether it's bidirectional, unidirectional. So there's really no uh, you know, magic formula to, that will say that if you have this, this, and that, then it's going to be this, that many users. It, it will really vary from one application to another, from one deployment to another. So the best way to find out is just, you know, you know, run run the tests to to, to see how the server in your application would, would perform. 